Hello and welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. My name is Saiken and we're playing on hard difficulty. Today it's time for episode 4. Sparklight, our rigor, has had a pretty rough run as uh, he was investigating the Wampa district with his crew. Uh, they barely made it out alive. He got some Nuyen for the job and we find ourselves um, with around a thousand Nuyen. Uh, just bought uh, an upgrade, a passive magical upgrade, and yeah, I think we're now going to do some investigation in a museum, our next run. We do have quite a few runners available, our team grew as we've recruited Gaichu in the last run. Uh, we're not going to spend any money for any uh, separate runners, so I like to think that uh, when we continue using Duncan, he's just very steady and stable DPS. Um, I like the idea of uh, Gorbet as well, so I think the two of them are dead set. And if I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me correct, this is one of uh, the missions where you actually need a Decker. So I'm sorry, Gaichu, but you gotta stay behind for now. So this will be probably our standard team, to be honest. Um, if you do have a mage, uh, it is easier to trade out Gobbit um, and just take Gaichu with you because you can take care of all of the spells. But her shamanistic spells are quite useful, so we want to keep her. All right, time to look at our equipment. We are... This time without a dog wagon uh, contract, so gotta be careful. And unfortunately, you can't snatch the ones from the team. It'd be too uh, too good if they would share their equipment. But the gear is pretty much your like it's just your gear. It's not um, uh, as in Baldur's Gate where you're managing the entire party. They will always spawn with their standard outfit. Um, we also might need to invest into better armor at. Uh, times not right now but soon the armor is going to upgrade it's not a bad system because it, it streamlines uh, the player experience quite a bit unfortunately when it, uh, when it comes to um, like the ability of the party to contribute eh, they are a bit limited anyways uh, Mr. Drake is uh, our Johnson for today's run and he has basically um, helped us to go into uh, this museum um, and he wants to make sure that we're stealing as much of the artifacts as possible. Uh, there is however an alarm threshold so we can at maximum uh, steal 10 artifacts uh, and um, so we need to make sure that we're stealing only the most valuable uh, ones. Oh, that's not always easy. We're taking the one for 1,400 for sure. We're taking the mummified head for 950. That's a given as well. We're, of course, leaving the replica skull uh, there. Good. We're taking... A skeleton, we're taking the vase, we are taking what's back here? The jawbone. There we go. Taking this. And I think the others were pretty worse. So this is the only one that is worth the effort. Come on, guys, can you show me the value, please? Yeah, I think that vase here was the last one that we needed to uh, take. At least that's how I solved it the last time. Yeah, the others were 300 a pop. Okay, now before we go any further, there is quite a bit that we can do here. This bookshelf, in particular, will give us 
x's. Access to office room controls. Um, we wanted to uh, take the restricted access, all right. And the password here was a Tennyson. There we go. This gives us exit to a vault. And within the vault, uh, if I'm not completely mistaken, there should be like really valuable items. Yeah, pottery and a mystic staff. There we go. Got our extra karma. Good. Now on to the lower level. Oh, wait. We still got a room here. Good. It's going to be a bit more uh, down here. It's going to be a bit more chilly because uh, they have been digging uh, for magical artifacts, and um, the do not enter has been put there for a reason. So we're now forced to pick up tombs, ancient books uh, that he wants uh, us to pick up. That's our actual mission. Yeah, uh, the uh, tombs. And if I'm not mistaken, he wants us to pick up two or three of them. And of course, as you can imagine, that's not always working uh, that well. You can already see a couple of mummies and gargoyles there. Not the type of company that you want to deal with. Let's first of all explore everything before we fight. Good. And this is the point where we finally enter the matrix for the first time, because here we can get some shipping data. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the matrix so far, Isabel is essentially um, going to hack through the matrix here. Um, the most important things for from a system standpoint is there is a so-called system trace. Um, if that fills up completely, it essentially means that the system overheats and we are going to take punishment for that because so-called black eyes uh, will start hunting us. Um, the idea behind it or the theory behind it is she has, um, she has wired her brain to the actual, uh, to the actual matrix and the corporations have uh, have now started to develop um, countermeasures. Um, that is what IC stands for, um, in intelligent countermeasures, in order to yeah to uh, to prevent intrusions. Um, and the most fearsome ones are so-called black eyes uh, countermeasures. Uh, they can directly access through the school port uh, the the brain of the hacker, of the decker, rather. Uh, so Isabel would take real damage fighting black eyes, which means we are trying to like prevent that whenever it's um, it happens. Uh, these here are just drones for now. They are simply scouting. And here we can see a data storage for shipping as well as uh, deciphered spells. Uh, the spells are important because uh, we can uh, we can use uh, them. And this is where I'm going to make a fool of myself because we're now starting to hack.
Good, so I'll explain in a second what I just did. So basically how hacking works is um, if you can either simply break through, but that will create 50 um, uh, system trays, and we didn't want that to happen right away, or you need to play this little um, game that I've just uh, played, uh, where it starts with four numbers and moves up all the way to eight numbers in a row uh, that you need to correctly assemble. If you do so, um, you are essentially bypassing the system. So the alternative is forcing our way through it, but as you can see, now we're almost at an overheated system. We get uh, Wild Aim, a very, very uh, useful spell um, that we're actually going to take. Since we don't have spell casting, we can only stash it, uh, but aim, uh, Wild Aim 2 is pretty damn good. Um, it's a good spell. I was super happy when I found it with uh, my mage. And we can now extract ourselves, so that's um, 600 uh, Nguyen right there, plus shipping data, which we can sell later on the black market. You can see it is crucial to have a decker, and thankfully Isabel uh, plays that role decently well. Good, which brings us to our next step fighting against the opposition here. Good, this time we can we can start getting um, getting a good first round on them. Summoning a spirit. Yes, please. We are going to give, uh, you know what? We're going to give Saiken a bit of armor. Moving closer. And let's start hitting the gargoyle, shall we? There we go, nice little crit. Good. Saiken himself um, goes into control mode with both of his drones. Hopefully they will be better this time. Doberman goes into cover. Oh, takes a nice shot, that's good. I like it. Saiken takes a shot himself. I think for Duncan, we're going all the way over here. Fair enough. And Isabel uh, can probably take some cover over here. Good. Our sniper drone has a pretty decent range, so I am not afraid of uh, almost putting it further back to here, into cover. Oh, nice. 21 points of damage. Hell yeah. The ghouls have a special ability, basically dragging someone into a parallel dimension, um, into a dream dimension. So that's where the ghost has uh, just gone to. Um, that's good. I mean, as long as they do it with a ghost, I'm totally fine with it. Duncan, unfortunately, got hit in uh, with the nasty petrification ability of uh, the gargoyle and is now out of, out of actions for one round. That's okay for now. I think... We need to take a shot again at the gargoyle. It's just a question who is supposed to do it. 
There we go, nice little flanking damage. The Doberman hits twice. Oh, hell yeah, they are dealing a lot of damage. Okay, I retract my previous statement about the drones. Uh, we're going to Overwatch. Overwatch is an ability that you are getting once you have enough points in uh, your in your ranged uh, damage ability. Um, as for our fight here, Ghost versus um, his opponent. They are basically teleported back and the ghost immediately like disappears. Yep, but that is what I was worried about. There are more of them incoming. Thankfully, we do have Overwatch, so we're actually killing them quite well. Um, there is another gargoyle up here. 50% chance of hitting it. Solid, solid damage when we're flanking it. A sniper has a problem hitting uh, hitting enemies close to it. So let's fly away. Much better. Giving our aim buffs to both Isabel and uh, Sparklight. Isabella is going to take uh, the grenade launcher and since they nicely clustered up, that's a perfect opportunity for us to hit them well. Oh, the last grenade was just marvelous. 20 points of damage twice. Sparklight has been pulled into uh, this ex extra dimension. <laughs> and he has been pulled there together with his drones. Buddy, I think you bit off more than you can chew. This here is bad. <clears throat> That's really bad. Um, Gosh, that is unfortunate. Let's see. Uh, we couldn't fully kill the gargoyle. Ah, that is un that is indeed very unfortunate. All right, let's try to hit this guy. Medium cover, flying into a flanking position. We were failing a lot of 50-50s here. God damn it. All right, our sniper drone worked uh, very well on our long distances. Moving up with a Doberman. We are healing. Goblet and essentially let's try to to get rid of uh, the enemies here. Gargoyle, that's a hit.
Okay, we're taking our sniper drone again. Fortunately, need to reload this time. But look at that. On long distance shots, that's actually pretty damn good. So we can pick up the books, but the story is far from over. This is going to be pretty messy, boys, once uh, we find out what's really going on. Okay, so this is a cool feature. I totally liked it. Um, he's, a, he's a corpse. of uh, and and the former warrior who basically asked us to like preserve uh, the uh, talisman um, and he offers us to just not dis destroy the books and instead he will uh, give us his service for once Good. We got a new item, a talisman of uh, spirit talisman of the mummy, and essentially it will allow us to summon him once. In our la in my last playthrough, I shamefully admit that I did not even summon him because my character was able to handle the um, the fights quite well. So there was really no need f uh, for it. With a uh, with a rigor, it's a bit different. The fights seem to be a, um, a slightly bit harder. Good. We've wiped uh, the security locks, and you know, as always, when uh, when you think that that everything is going well, it really isn't. And in this case, we're being attacked by um, by security because uh, that treacherous bastard um, has basically double-crossed us. How could he dare to do that? Good. We're controlling. Needed to take some cover. Guard, Captain, and Enforcer. We're going for the Captain. Nice little flanking damage. Duncan moves over here. <coughs> good what? Uh, good job. All right, uh, can't hit them right away, so might as well go and take some cover. And our shaman is going to take some cover as well. Now that's the one weakness if we're being exposed to grenades. That is unfortunate. Okay, control mode number two, getting our Doberman drone into position. Our sniper drone could perfectly be positioned over here. It's a good line of sight. Unfortunately, cannot uh, hit anyone there. Let's give ha haste to Isabel. I am expecting her grenades to be quite helpful here. <clears throat> and with haste, she can lob two grenades and even reload at the same time. 
Yeah, I, this here looks like cover, but it really isn't. So that's a problem. Yeah, can't position ourselves any better. Luckily, the AI sometimes does these suicidal runs if you're putting yourself too well into cover. In that case, we're reloading, and now you're going to see the true strength of grenades. They can be horribly, horribly overpowered. Does anyone require healing? No. Good. Okay, so twenty two points of damage with one shot. Nice. And another eleven. Well, it did not crit, but I could I can reassure you if it would have crit, uh, it would have probably killed him completely. All right, our sniper. Line of sight blocked. That's not what I want to hear. Doberman moves over here. And I think we can risk moving the sniper drone to here. There we go, time for our elemental. It's supposed to um, take the shots. All right, let's go for the captain. Nice little flanking shot. Fortunately, the follow-up shot has missed. The drone heals itself. There we go. All right, the ghost is wreaking havoc on them. Good. We're just overwatching for now. I don't want to go in there. Might as well reload and overwatch. Ghost is still here. And holy shit, it's tearing uh, the enemy apart. Good. Of course, this little weasel of a Johnson tells us it's not his problem and that he did not betray us. Instead, he tells us to leave through the back entrance. And who would have thought? We're getting ambushed yet again. But these fights are much easier than the ones before. We're going into double control mode again. Sparklight is controlling his drones. Nice little, uh, nice little hit. Going for cover. Well, that's that worked incredibly well. Doberman moves in. Fortunately, couldn't finish him quite. We are giving haste to Isabel.
And there's the first kill. The grenade launcher is just overpowered. That's one hit. Oh, come on. Holy shit. 22 points of damage with a flanking shot. Nice. I wanted to move up and shoot her from the side, but I think, uh, shoot the guy from the side, but I think just staying in cover is the better option. Yeah, that did not work uh, as planned. Should have given her accuracy before she actually started to shoot. There we go. All right. Now that we've dealt with the security personnel, we are out of there. But if I'm not mistaken, the run wasn't over. This weasel still wanted to meet us. But I might be mistaken. You're getting um, you're getting double crossed a lot in Shadowrun. That's also one of the fun parts of the role-playing game uh, since the shadow runners are the sinless quote-unquote like mercenaries that you can hire for plausible deniability um, the johnsons so whomever uh, they are uh, hi uh, whomever their uh, source of a contract is will essentially put them on to really really difficult uh, missions um, and more often than not just double cross them so uh, that's almost the default in some of the cases. I used to play one campaign where we got, I think, double cross seven times in a row. So <laughs> it became a meme at some point. Good. The team functioned quite well. I think the rigor is a good addition to the team. Rigor kind of offers at the moment, um, brings a lot of DPS uh, to the table and that means you need more um, utility functions with with others uh, such as the mage oh okay cool uh, so the run was essentially really over already let's take a look at uh, our karma we are sitting at whooping 11 karma which is a lot so time for us to increase our stats a bit uh, we talked about how we want to go four into dodging and then probably three into rifles and that'll be it for now we're going to go higher into quickness uh, dodging and ranged combat next that's fine um, intelligence i guess for now is good we're still like moving towards uh, the seven which is the natural resting spot where we want to uh, keep it at the end we don't need any more um, uh, willpower for now. Yeah, yeah. All of this here is too expensive. Albeit, it's a good buff. Um, but we're getting cyberware now, and we don't need any of that as well. So yeah, really, I think it's a solid. We're, we're having solid shooting abilities. That's fine which means we might now want to go for cyberware next and really go into cyber affinity kind of get body five as well um, uh, giving us some more hit points uh, there is a really important cyber affinity update with uh, level three um, so we definitely want to at least get uh, get that the other important one is at level six if we have enough karma we yeah, we probably will. I mean, uh, six um, body is not unheard of. It's a it's a good stat to uh, to raise. 
quickness and dodge will and and uh, range combat will be kind of our lifeline if we want to act ourselves um, and intelligence so that's really the these are the three components and i still need to think through what we're going to mix first um, I'm part of me almost wants to go for kind of cyberware uh, three, which gives us an extra ascent. Uh, that's um, each each character has six ascents, and that's the amount of cyberware that you can uh, build into the character. Uh, the normal Shadowrun rule does not allow you to increase the ascents, uh, but I think they have just like created this tree to not only make it hit points, um, which is fine. I I can get behind that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, quickness, okay. I think, buddy, we're putting a couple more karma, karma points into the cyberware affinity, and then we'll cut it there. And to be honest, uh, then let's go to seven and finish the drones so that that chapter or that, that part of the character is done. And then the only question is how much resilience, like toughness, do we want? and how much dodge and range combat do we want dodge really 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 is good uh, once it gets to the higher levels and you can like upgrade that quite a bit with uh, cyberware as well um, so there there is a there is a strong incentive to kind of go to six five six um, uh, dodge and then you essentially use cyberware to like get more quickness and more dodge it, for me it really helped um, helped a lot it made a, a lot of difference with my mage and uh, it was actually or it is actually a primary set for almost any character in this game because you take no damage right good let's level up our team that's the next thing our red shaman he gets uh, some more stats and can now either steal spirit, um, which happens whenever the enemy is um, summoning a spirit, or destroy a spirit, uh, which is a very strong um, destructive blast against spirits uh, that are being summoned. To be honest, um, I've the last time used um, destroy spirit, might as well go with um, grab spirit. The reason why I'm not super fast about that is it's very seldom that the enemy is um, actually creating spirits uh, we can either get um, the pistol ability that increases accuracy uh, and or uh, get a technical computer marks weak point on opponent's armor armor um, isabel's mark target ability now reduces the armor by one uh, yeah, that's fine, I guess, but I mean, last time I've used this espionage. You know what? It is actually not bad because uh, there, I was just about to say, but it was worthless. Uh, um, it was worthless because I had my main character had uh, destroy armor, but we don't have that anymore. So reducing enemies armor isn't too bad. So might as well uh, try it this time. Good. Duncan gains an assault rifle ability that has a 99% hit chance um, uh, when enemies are below 25%. I really like it. It had worked very well the last time and I'm going to use it again. And we either have Shuriken um, as a ranged ability <coughs> or the Ghoul Spit ability with a cooldown. Both of them have a cooldown. Um, Last time I used the Ghoul Spit ability, oh, it was okay, um, nothing to write home about, but it was okay. This time I'm going to try Shuriken. And that is it with the upgrades. Now next uh, step will be a bit of mission management. We are taking our uh, payment from the museum's run. A nice little 1,900, which is great. We're going to Shadowland and post the shipping manifest. Um, uh, so that's going to be some extra Nguyen uh, that we're getting. And 
and there's a new run that we've just uh, gotten ourselves. So as a job directory, uh, view all active jobs, we got three more runs, an urgent task and a restaurant job um, that were coming in, but we of course want to finish the other uh, runs as well. Good. Before we do any of uh, uh, these uh, things, though, I'm wondering, we have almost 3,000 uh, Nguyen. Oh, our auntie wants to talk to us. Progress the storyline a bit. Oh, yeah, there is an, yet another run. This is one of the messages. Yeah, we're going to go into... Um, we're going to go into his mission once where we've actually taken it. Uh, essentially, <clears throat> he's a film producer and wants us to discreetly uh, steal uh, the main actress of one of his uh, major competitors. It's a fun mission and involves more fighting than you might uh, think just from listening at um, to the kind of uh, story. Good. We have just uncovered the cyber clinic. And this here is one of the coolest characters, uh, 10 uh, armed Ambrose. He doesn't have any legs, but he's kind of the master of cyberware. So well, let's take a look at his uh, cyberware. You can also buy medical equipment. And cyberware, I, I like how they did it. Um, you basically have certain slots, <clears throat> and alongside the slots you can uh, you can purchase the cyberware. Uh, important to know some of uh, the uh, uh, some of the cyberware will be alphaware, meaning it takes less uh, less um, uh, essence costs and often has an, a nice little extra feature. For instance, this um, cyber arm normally would cost one point five essence um, and gives you one strength, and uh, the uh, alphaware costs less and also adds a couple of hit points on top of it. So what we're looking for is we like uh, dodge bonu uh, bonuses. Um, so that'll be helpful. Why can't we take that one here? Oh, we need cyber affinity too. All right. So um, this arm, the passive dodge bonus is definitely good. Plus one dodge and plus one movement isn't bad either. Uh, the eyes are certainly really, really good. Um, uh, specifically, the alpha version of it, passive six percent to hit, is is a really nice um, ability. Um, I personally also liked uh, the plus one to all physical attributes. Um, and it only costed 0 0.5 essence, so that wasn't uh, that wasn't bad either. Wild reflexes is maybe something that we want to look in, uh, look into as soon as possible. Um, I haven't found wild reflexes alphaware until the end of the game, so uh, might as well start purchasing as soon as uh, we have the new yen. And we need cyber affinity five. Ooh, ouch. Ouch. So basically what it does is gives you a higher movement and you can trigger it to gain an additional um, action point. So basically free haste uh, with a cooldown of four, uh, four turns, which isn't bad. It's actually really good. Um, Seda Krupp skill wires uh, plus one quickness and ranged combat. That's exactly what we want um, if we want to hit better. Uh, but there are more things that are helpful for us as well. Uh, I like quickness updates generally. This here is one that I um, like a lot, the, draw, um, the Jolt Alert. Basically, when you lose all of your AP, uh, you will still uh, stay uh, conscious with one um, AP. 
so against um, yeah enemy melee combatants or grenades that'll help you um, I wasn't the biggest fan of uh, the uh, dermal plating uh, yes armor is okay and plus one body is also fine but it costed a lot and high um, essence cost as well there were better options for instance uh, legs uh, these one here were phenomenal which just costed a lot um, uh, eight hit points uh, plus one quickness and plus one dodge that's exactly what we need uh, because quickness is what we're looking for um, to to upgrade and uh, dodge is the in my perspective best defense skill uh, skill in uh, the computer game of shadow on hong kong so we're probably going to look for those uh, to be honest uh, these were a few of the highlights um, and I think that that's that. There were a couple of good skin, uh, derma skins as well. Plus one armor, for instance, wasn't uh, wasn't bad at all. Um, or the um, or the alpha version. I, well, that was the more expensive one. No, no, there was another one. This one here healed you. I think there was another one that was quite good, but it, I might be mistaken. I might be mistaken. So we want wild reflexes. I can see us with that character actually going for the dermal plating um, uh, to get the armor. We definitely want the eyes, so that's our first uh, purchase um, right off the bat. And we probably want both of the legs uh, due to the uh, quickness. Um, there was one uh, that was giving you uh, quickness and ranged combat. Yep, the Seda Krupp arm. Might consider taking that as well. And it's cheap, 0.3. It's actually skill wires, 0 0.3 um, uh, ascents. That's not bad at all. The reason why I'm currently not purchasing quickness and range combat upgrades is there is, a, in my perspective, um, a programming error in the game, um, which, um, which will modify your... Um, your stats uh, so let's say you have four quickness and it gives you plus one quickness plus one range combat what you're going to see is um, an increased bubble here uh, i can then no longer like just increase quickness to five i would need to increase quickness to six so we're essentially losing karma by by doing uh, that uh, because you need to pay more uh, more karma although your original value always had been uh, one lower and uh, yeah, that's that's not how it works in the normal system. I think that was an oversight. So what we're going to do by thinking about it and our cyberware upgrades, we really might want to uh, start getting to five cyberware. And then we're in, in order, we're taking our eyes first, uh, then the wild reflexes because they are really good. Then the dermal plating because it goes um, onto the body slot, and in the meantime we can upgrade uh, quickness um, and dodge uh, exclusively. Um, uh, maybe two more levels, let's say to to six six, um, and um, and uh, then take all of the cyberware that supports quickness and uh, dodge, um, as well as ranged combat. So yeah, that's the plan for the character development. Just, just uh, came to that conclusion. And this is it for today. Already 50 minutes in. Um, Sparklight says goodbye, as always. Uh, we're going to see uh, us on the streets of Hong Kong in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. And see you very soon. Bye-bye.